Hello everyone, welcome to this week's YouTube tutorial. If you're new here, my name is Mike Ingledew and I'm just all about making you successful with your integrated product support strategies. Now, um, this last week I attended what was known as the Support Chain Seminar here in the UK. Uh, the, the Support Chain Seminar, for those of you who are not familiar with what it is from uh, around the world, is uh, a platform, a forum for uh, the UK MOD uh, and specifically the area of the MOD that acquires hardware assets for uh, our armed forces uh, to meet with uh, industry and learn and share uh, best practice when it comes to, in this case, this year they were talking about leveraging uh, the digital opportunity. Um, it was held and it's always pretty much held in the same area, very much like our event, uh, down in the Aerospace Centre um, in Bristol and uh, right underneath uh, the good old Concord here. I'll put some footage up so you can uh, have a look rather than um, looking at my uh, pretty face. So it's attended by vendors. We actually took a table there for the first time. Now, full disclosure, I've not been for a couple of years because I was a little bit, um, not cynical, I was just a little bit worried that every year we were talking about the same thing uh, with very little kind of progress. And I know that, you know, the all like all defence organisations and like large corporates, um, the wheels turn slowly and but I think this year there was a little bit of momentum um, so we were there project teams were there those are the guys that actually acquire the hardware and um, you know they they actually put the, the hardware into service uh, so they were there but of course what's more important is the key decision makers are there the senior officials so I bumped into the guys from RWS, Alan Webb, TLM Nexus, GPSL. Um, I hope I've got a BMT with there, but not the part of BMT that I work with. Uh, so, you know, some of the TDW customer base were there as well. And we, you know, some were exhibiting, some were just there as attendees. Uh, we had a little uh, natter and a catch up. Um, so really the forum is all about um, sharing ideas. But I'm going to share with you today the kind of the common messages that I heard, how can we align that to maybe the S series IPS S 1000 D type environment? Um, and then, you know, look at what I also think was missing. I mean, one of the key messages really, I keep going down to my notes here. Um, so the one of the key messages was that the MOD wants to become an intelligent customer. And um, uh, you know, and the intelligent customer thing is an interesting uh, discussion because there are lots of dynamics around being an intelligent customer and, you know, uh, reducing educational budgets and stopping people going to, to, to uh, educational forums or, you know, allowing people to go on to training courses, etc., is not and precluding them from doing so is not helping you becoming an intelligent customer. So um, but I did think that there was a mind shift. Um, you know, they've said they want to become an intelligent customer. They want to change the way they do things. Um, but I'm going to go through this in kind of some semblance of order um, here. So there were some really good presentations. And, um, you know, there was guys from Raytheon that were presenting. MBDA were presenting. Uh, there was a new aircraft type. Is it Alaris or Auroris or something along those lines? Uh, sorry if I forget the name. Uh, which was a really interesting presentation because it's cutting edge technology trying to use cutting edge digital methods, uh, which I thought was a really good one. So, um, but one of the things that is coming out and is actually this week, I've only been having this conversation with some organizations, is the lack of skills in the market, lack of engineering skills. And so technology is now being seen as a, an opportunity to help kind of bridge these skills gaps. And I'll talk about how, you know, um, one of the presenters said that, you know, previously they might have had a whole room um, full of drafting engineers and drawing engineers, etc. For specifically for things like Concord, I think was the um, was the example that was given. Um, how technology has moved that down to just a few people needed. So um, you know, so just one example like that. And so there's the, and and I picked out lots of things from the SES that I'm going to um, 
I'm going to do separate tutorials on for YouTube. So it's giving me ideas for content, which is great. Um, the, one of those is the one of the great slide points on the general slides was um, no more snake oil solutions. And um, I, I don't know whether it was the general or it was another presenter that then said, I, I think it was a presenter that later on in the afternoon said, no more buy one, get one freeze so we can make sure one is always working. How about we buy one and it's always working? So, um, so the snake oil solutions is one that I definitely want to do something uh, for YouTube on because that is something that I hear all of the time with the customers that I am supporting is that they've been oversold capability and um, and then one one comment came in to me saying how about you know we've been sold a solution and now we can't get hold of our vendor uh, you know so I'm going to do something specific on that but I'm going to try and do it in a balanced way I'm not going to try and do it in an attacking way we need to do it in in a in a sensible way there are still cynics at these events uh, you know we had a table and uh, a couple of people came by and said came by and said never happen uh, a couple of people said they're still talking about the same stuff they were talking about four or five years ago um, so you know there will always be cynics there will always be uh, people that don't believe in um, should we say this kind of road to a modern uh, product support and data sharing environment um, but I think that you know there is a thirst I think there was a definitely a thirst um, you know the one thing that I'm going to do for YouTube because I think is uh, is a question we need to ask and it's an elephant in the room is um, many and this came out of Vienna as well is that when we're talking about integrated product support is that you know we're talking about how do we have all of these you know IPS ILS domains talking to each other sharing data connecting data etc what I'm hearing is that many organizations are already doing this so they're already connecting all of these domains and they might be doing it in a bespoke way so I'm going to try I'm challenging myself to try and tell you why I think the S series is important because that was what was lacking in Vienna and um, and then you know we can have a a public debate debate or bun fight um, because point number six on my slides is that what a couple of presenters said is that whilst they're doing it uh, and they're having to integrate with the supply chain and I'm going to talk about their their supply chain uh, in a moment is that there was lack of data consistency. That's one of the areas that obviously S1, S, the S series uh, is trying to address is a common methodology for doing this kind of stuff. But I, I'm not gonna spoiler alert what I've got planned to kind of debunk some of the thoughts around the S series. But they did say, uh, you know, that there was a lack of consisti consistency in data structures. And I picked out one comment a guy said on his, uh, on his presentation. Um, he says, it, when we're doing translations, and in our world we can be talking about transformations, but when he says we're doing translations, um, he says that just equals friction uh, in the process. But it, it also means much more than that, right? It means disconnecting data. We're actually disconnecting data when we start transforming. So, um, so we're actually moving away from this connected environment. So we need to be uh, aware of those kind of things. Uh, so I'm going to do something on YouTube on that. Um, some of the presenters talked about digital test beds and how they can model things like missile firing and where in the old days they might need 30, 40 missiles to confirm that a design works, actual live missiles at X million pound each to ensure that they are um, you know, working as designed. Uh, they're now saying that they can mimic all of this with very few actual live firings, saving um, literally millions and millions of pounds by leveraging the digital um, environment. So uh, now, but one thing I did pick out from one of the slides was um, that they said that there was still in all of these models, lots of assumptions that needed to be made. And of course, with assumptions, we know that what assumptions do, that makes an ass out of you and me. So, um, you know, we need to be sure that our models are are good. And I'm, I'm definitely not a modeling expert, for sure. Uh, I, so I've learned enough over the last couple of years to uh, to have a semi-intelligent conversation. Um, one 
uh, of the senior military officials said for too long, um, the emphasis has been on cost and procurement and we've lost sight of or we're not having thought of through life support costs. And um, so which is something I've been banging on about uh, in my little kind of bucket of, you know, technical publications. And, you know, I talk when I'm talking to my customers about advanced intelligent technical publications, because when you just talk about technical publications, generates an image. And um, but when we talk about advanced technical publications and what that gives us uh, is, um, you know, where the real return on investment is. And um, so so that is, you know, something that I heard loud and clear from the the military officials that were there were saying, look, you know, for too long we focused on product uh, cost and early uh, acquisition cycle and not had any kind of thoughts of what's going on uh, when we're in the through life uh, phase. Um, a new term for me came out, which came out from industry presentation, which I which I wrote down immediately because when you go to all of these events, there's always new buzzwords. There's always new terms that get bandished around. And I'm going to talk about that on the next slide is that, you know, the the digital trust network. This is the big problem. And if you were in Seattle and you were there when the the Lufthansa guys gave their presentation and and they I think it was five challenges I think they gave and one of them was the lack of trust in the market with the lack of trust for sharing data and and, and I wrote down a whole when I was watching all of these presentations I wrote down a whole raft of notes and uh, and I wrote down how are we going to get all of these people to trust each other to share data, to be willing to integrate data. And and this it sounded like this particular vendor had managed to achieve that at some level. And in this case, I'm talking vendor in terms of hardware manufacturer. And um, which this is all key to it becoming a reality. If we're not going to share data, all of this is noise, all of this is nonsense. Uh, we need to be able to um, is we need to be able to take data from one vendor to another, even if in in some environments they're competitors, and we need to be able to integrate it and have it talking to each other. But coming back to my earlier point, Raytheon's presentation, uh, the presenters opened up with, uh, or, or in his slide said, this is not new, uh, we've been doing this for a long time. And what he was talking about was digital assets and working with digital assets. And I know that I've spoken to some of my uh, colleagues and friends in the market here uh, where you guys have told me that we're, we're already doing this we're already connecting these silos we're already you know looking at trends the Rolls-Royce presentation by the way uh, at this event if you can get access to it was phenomenal and and it showed how they started small and they're slowly snowballing and they have a vision for this whole digital environment, digital twin, digital thread, how they're going to connect all of these domains. Um, so if you can get hold of that presentation, I would um, I would recommend you watch it because it was really thoroughly interesting. Three guys, young guys, all giving a great presentation on you know Rolls Royce's vision and strategy for leveraging all of these digital. Uh, technologies. So what did I think? What did I think? What did I take away? And again, I'm not trying to criticise. Uh, you know, I know that these events um, are often very, very difficult to uh, get people to stand up and speak, especially when they're talking about subjects like this that might be giving them strategic advantage over their competitors. And um, so taking, it's taking a step back, uh, I was a little bit concerned um, that many of the pre presentations or some of the presentations were just using buzzwords without really understanding what those buzzwords meant and the implications of what the, um, you know, if we say that we're going to use digital twin, we want to use digital twin, what does that mean? And there was one presentation that talked about, and there was a great um, young guy who, who actually showed how to make a digital twin. And then he, uh, he showed um, how sensors on a pump were monitoring vibrations and then how they monitored the frequency of those vibrations and then as soon as those vibration frequencies changed they could say right that pump's about to fail um, so but we need to know what we mean by all of this and we need to know what we mean by digital sharing and at what level and what the appetite is for in terms of sharing 
digital content and what could that look like um my my one of my points here and i've just mentioned it and i i think i talked about it after seattle as well is how do we overcome this trust issue you know um how do we develop a digital trust network what are the the methods for doing that you know if, if you've got vendor one uh, that's uh, partnering with vendor two on a on a project which we see all of the time they have lots of intellectual property in all of this data so how are we going to um how are we going to do that how are we going to but i'm sure brains better than mine will come up with the with the solution um the the intelligent customer um we need to we need to make this more than words you know we can't we've been talking about intelligent customer for a very long time and you know at tdw live we've we've talked about how uh, skills and resource etc have been diminished in many organizations worldwide you know i've had conversations this week with people who are talking about the struggling uh, to to find and identify uh, the necessary talent to come into the market and this, and the, you know um i paid played lip service to this um, you know, people my age, 50 plus, who post COVID, I can't say that on YouTube, but post um, the C word, um, just retired, took took um, the redundancy packages and retired. And, and, you know, they're now playing golf in Florida somewhere. So, you know, how do we replace that skill pool? And um, so we need to make sure that we can develop these skills. And part of that becoming an intelligent customer is investing in the education of your people so um snake oil solutions um was a great one really resonated with me and i had a couple of conversations with a few people and i said did you see the snake oil thing because he didn't actually talk about it he had it on the bottom of his slides so it was probably a kind of a fraudulent we 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 know you we see you kind of thing um so uh, but i did speak to a couple of people about it uh, but are we holding these people or these projects to account is what I've put here. If you're being oversold something, what's the consequences of that? And I didn't hear any of the consequences side of things. Um, you notice that I haven't really overly mentioned the S series. That's because only one out of all of the presentations mentioned the S series. And and that was from Phil Williams, who's the chair of the IPS Council, uh, who it's his job to talk about the S series. So what what I took away from that was that nobody's really aware of what the S series is doing or what it's supposed to do. But the problem I have um, with that is that if people are already doing this, then is the S series really a um, a horse after you know after the gate that what am i trying to say is it the it is early in the morning here are we trying to close the gate after the horse has already bolted a little bit i don't think so okay and i'm going to talk about that on youtube shortly uh, in the next few weeks um, but for many platforms they are not going to reverse engineer structures into an s series structure um, and you know because they're already doing it they've got to, one guy was talking about terabytes and terabytes of data that they have so and transformations equals friction in the in the process remember what that the, the guy said before so um so but what i did also take away is that there were some people that were really keen to come and talk about technical publications um with me and claire was with me as well and um they were keen to learn more about you know what did i mean by intelligent technical publications and um i you know i, I don't jump straight into the s1000d conversation because people just glaze over and you know you have to talk about what's in it for them and you know so we did have some really good intelligent conversations around t uh, modern technical publications advanced technical publications and uh, but what i did also take away was that there was lots of people there that go oh tech pubs yeah i think we do that and you know so um but you know the, the the conference itself was much broader than kind of the niche stuff that 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 we look at maybe uh, in this domain so if you were there let me know what you thought and uh, do 
uh, like, share, subscribe. As I've said, I'm trying to get us to uh, 800 subscribers uh, this year because I've set myself a real stretchable target. Hopefully we can do that. I know that I've already had a load of questions in uh, through LinkedIn and emails uh, to kick off the new year. So thank you for that. I have a list of people I need to answer. I'm going to do my best to get to that as soon as I can. Um, so I guess really from, from my side, I'm experimenting with the look and feel here. Uh, hopefully you like it. It is like six o'clock in the morning here. Uh, I'm having to be uh, super, super quiet. And it's about time I took my dog for a walk. So um, take care. Until the next one. See you soon.